A brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. I know sometimes you feel all alone. Call me anytime when you feel all the way down. Oh, trials and temptations lie at every corner we turn. It's a test from Allah to see if we succeed or not. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. In the name of Allah, the compassion of the merciful. All praises due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad, his family, and his followers all until the day of reckoning. Let me welcome every one of you tonight as we are going into the second episode of our program live from Riyadh on Huda TV. This is Meet Your Advisor. And of course, I'm so glad to be with you on this particular program because, of course, we do have emails to be contacted with. Also, phone lines that are open for you. So we case, in case we need to get to, uh, to meet and to talk about certain issues that are on our minds, any inquiries uh, that may bother us, and we need to discuss all these issues. Let me, before I get into emails that I was not able to uh, get last, from last time, let me uh, get today into the main topic I'd like to address. Because normally, when you are in uh, talking about Social issues in particular, and, and I know this is general for every issue that we meet in our daily life, regarding the rights and obligations. Concerning the rights of others, of course, we know as Muslims that we have to be understanding the rights and obligations of others upon us and our duties towards us. Of course, we do have rights on others. But let me start with rights in order to give everyone his or her own right. In order to be safe and not to be questioned and not to have conflicts and uh, difficulties or challenges that we face every day or we commit injustice against others. Beginning with the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right upon us and we need to know about his own rights, glory be to him, starting with the most important right, which is to single him out in worship. This is the most important thing that we need to understand and to apply in our life. Last night, I was sitting with a group of Filipino brothers who submitted to Islam, who reverted to Islam, and some of them have been like a Muslim for a year or less or more, but they still did not or probably have not yet grasped the basic idea of what Islam is all about. I know they understand what Islam is. It's a good religion, very peaceful, very nice, um, happy to be with, very simple, uh, no complications. The idea of the oneness of Allah the Almighty is so central in the Islamic religion. And yet, when we come and apply it, we need to know some details in that regard. And now, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be worshipped, as this is the hadith of Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala, and when he was riding with the Prophet, peace be upon him, upon a donkey. And then uh, when, they, when they were doing, uh, they were riding, and he said, he asked him about Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon pe people and the right of people upon Allah? He said, well, yes. He said, what are the rights of Allah upon people and what are the, the people's rights upon Allah? He said, Allah wa Rasulu alam, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, the rights of Allah, or the right of Allah upon people is to worship Him and not to associate partners with Him. And if this is being fulfilled, the rights uh, or the right of people upon Allah is to have them enter paradise. Very simple formula. And if we do this, we need to understand how we 
apply this in our life is to direct our attention, our main concern in life, to worship Allah alone, to single Him out in this worship, not to associate partners with Him, not to ask someone besides Him in other things, in things that He only uh, would do for us and can do for us. This is very important. And then we fulfill our duties such as the prayers, the zakah, or the uh, almsgiving, the, the fasting in the month of Ramadan, and making hajj once in our life, if we are physically and financially able to do so. This is important. And of course, we uh, obey Allah and whatever He commands us to do and stay away from His own prohibitions. If we do that, based on our abilities, we know that sometimes we fall short of fulfilling this duty. We know that as human beings, we commit mistakes. We don't fully apply all of these requirements to the best of what we need to, all the high standards that are set for us. And of course, there is a big room for us to compete in this regard. But then we come back and we return, we, for, we, we, we repent, and again restart uh, committing ourselves to this basic obligation. This is the right of Allah upon us. But when we come to human beings, of course, it would be even more difficult. And you'd be surprised how difficult it would be to fulfill the rights of people upon us more than the right of Allah. Well, there is a very interesting and basic principle called in Arabic, حقوق الله مبنية على المسامحة وحقوق العباد مبنية على المشاحة. Well, the rights of Allah are based on leanness, uh, ease, and not to commit hardships in our lives. We worship Allah to the best of our ability. If we cannot do it, then we do our best in fulfilling that. But people need to have their own rights fulfilled. If, for example, you have to pay a certain amount to someone, like a salary or something, then if you don't fulfill it in, a, a, in the same, in the fullest amount, people will, will ask you to give it to them. And they will ask you, they will not, most of the time, they will not forgive you. They ask for their own rights and complete rights. That's why we need to be very careful when we deal with people rights, starting with, of course, because part of the obligation towards Allah is to fulfill the rights of the Prophet, peace be upon him, because he is the most important human being in our lives, uh, starting with his own respect and obedience and staying away from his own prohibitions. And of course, following the Prophet, peace be upon him, is part of following the commandments of Allah. That's again part of the Tawheed. As you know, when we say, in the, in the word of Tawheed, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, we say there is no uh, God worthy of worship except Allah. That is the right of Allah. But again, following that and giving us a real example in our human life is the right of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Muhammad Rasulullah is to obey the Prophet, peace be upon him, to believe in him, to believe in what he uh, said to us, to fulfill his commandments, to stay away from his prohibitions. Of course, that is a commitment. There is a commitment towards that right. But then, again, based on that and beyond that, we go to human beings. We have, for example, the rights of our parents upon us. And they, are, they have the right, the greatest right, in fact, after Allah and His Prophet, peace be upon Him. That is important. If we do have that and if we fulfill that, commitment, we we know that we need to give them the utmost respect and obedience, and of course, in things that are not contradictory to what Allah and His Prophet ask us to do. La ta'ata li makhluqin fi ma'asiyat al-khaliq. There is no obedience for a human being in the worship of uh, another human. This is this is basically the idea. I mean, if we 
do this if we fulfill the rights of our parents and then other human beings. Uh, obviously, we are. We are coming, in fact, closer to fulfilling the rights. Now we talk about the rights of the husband, the right of the neighbors, the right of our wives, the right of our uh, children, the rights of our relatives and blood uh, relationships, and so on and so forth. I mean, there are the rights of our bosses, the right of our employees, the right of our uh, other Muslims around us, the right of our uh, colleagues whom we work with. All of these are very, very important. And if we do fulfill and give everyone his own or her own right, we will be much better in our lives. That's, that's why we need to emphasize this so much because that will save us a lot of trouble. It will save us so much trouble. Very interesting. You know, coming to the questions that I have here today uh, from one of the sisters. This is a sister, I think, by the name of uh, Shukur Jumali, if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, and she said uh, she uh, went to follow her husband who went to Europe and he's, he has been living in Europe for three years. Now she, she said uh, she went to follow him in, in two years. I'm not really understanding the question very much, but she's been away from him either in, in Europe in a different place or maybe she's still in, in uh, a Muslim or Arab or uh, Arab country. And she said we, we've been away for about two years. Now, what I assume is that they got married three years ago they lived one year together, and then they uh, were away from each other for about two years. Now, during that, this, this period, now, she's asking about uh, whether this is right to stay away from one's husband or wife for this long period of time. That is a critical issue. Is that a right upon uh, a woman, for example, to stay closer to, to the husband, or is it the right of a husband uh, or the obligation upon a husband to stay close to his wife. Obviously, that depends on the case or the circumstances. If there is a full excuse and there is no way that they can be all together, obviously, they need to be all together because, you know, the concept of marriage is to live under the same roof, to be all together in the best of life and the worst of life. In, in certain circumstances that are happy or cer certain circumstances that are unhappy or challenging, we do face difficulties at times, but we need to face it together. If the husband and the wife get together and they need to be together. I know, for example, myself, when I started going to school in the United States a long time ago, when I went there, I wasn't married at that time. Of course, I did find it so difficult to stay bachelor at that time, early in the life. But then soon I got married and I had my, my wife join me in, uh, in my uh, uh, faraway place in the U.S. Obviously, we supported each other very well. And I think that is important. If someone uh, can take his family along, that would be the best solution. But if not, this person needs to see his family at least once a year or every six months or even every four months. At the time of Umar, radiallahu ta'ala an, when he sent the Muslim armies to the, to the borders to protect the borders and to, uh, you know, be ready to... to uh, stand against the enemy in case there is an attack on the Muslim state at his own time. And he asked his daughter Hafsa, may Allah be pleased with her. And he said, uh, Hafsa, what would be the most a husband can stay away from his, his family? Well, she said, I would, I would say four months. And then based on that, he asked that every four months, there should be a change of the 
the troops where one regiment or group of, of the army would come back to Medina, meet with their families, have like uh, a time off, and then send another group, and then after mo- four months they would, they would come back and so on and so forth. I mean, that was, that was a wise decision by uh, uh, Al-Khalifa Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, who was very concerned about not staying away uh, or taking a long period of time between a husband and a wife where it would be really a problem to stay away for that long. All right, I think we do have a caller. Ali, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes, um, I have a question for you. Brother, um, yes. I was, yes. Um, I was wondering, uh, well, it's not really questions, it's actually advice. Um, as far as, uh, you know, for the second wife, you know, and the first wife to be able to communicate. So, um, what is some advice for that? Because, you know, usually, uh, I mean, the first uh, is, you know, always, irritated, doesn't want to talk to the second one, Yanni. So I just wanted to know, Yanni, um, put some advice to get okay. because the second one has no problem, but usually it's the first, you know, so. Very good That's question. Uh, do you have any particular policy in this regard? Have you uh, applied any, have you followed any particular approach in this regard, or are you just leaving yeah. it as is? Yeah, I mean, Yanni, before, um, because uh, the second one, she wanted to, you know, go over to meet with the, the first one to, you know, talk about, uh, you know, some any problems, any issues, and just to, you know, get to be okay. uh, more familiar you know, with each All right. other. All right. But How long have you ma- been married, by the way, with the second one? Uh, it's been like four years now. And the first but one? the problem is still, and yeah, the first? for like ten, ten years. Ten years and then four uh, four years. So after six years yeah, of, yeah. of marriage, you you married another one, and well, now yeah. you've been together for four years. And I know that yeah. always there are difficulties and challenges in this regard. I'll I'll, I'll talk about that, yeah. brother Ali. Thank you so much for calling. Very well. Well, in fact, uh, this is a very good very good question because I had an email earlier from last week, addressing the same issue, the issue of a second wife. First, let me uh, talk about the principle. Of course, in Islam, it is quite all right and permissible for a Muslim uh, man to marry up to four wives, provided that that man is capable financially, physically, and emotionally and mentally to deal with the issue. It's not just a matter of uh, an open uh, door policy for every man to go in and, and marry as they wish. Because some people would like only to do it for the enjoyment of having another wife. But basically, one, it is a responsibility and an obligation for both. And you're dealing with human, human beings. And in that regard based on how the Prophet, peace be upon him, dealt with his other wives. Of course, he had this policy of being kind to all of them, yet the prophetic home was not free from some of the conflicts that always would take place between the first wife, the second wife, or third wife, and so on and so forth. That feeling is natural, and I can understand the feeling of women there have been so many stories I was told and I, 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 I sometimes share with my friends regarding these particular issues. In fact, some of them would come to me when I'm, as, an, as I'm an imam of a masjid uh, every time and they would complain. Even women call and say, well, I have been treated so badly by my husband because he has another wife and he's always turning to her rather than to me. He doesn't give me my own rights, and so on and so forth. So that would be a challenge if we understand that basically dealing with one wife is not like dealing with two, and dealing with two is not like dealing with three. In fact, the Prophet, peace be upon him, warned against that by saying, uh, 
would any one of you, uh, if one would turn towards one at the expense of the other, he would come on the day of judgment leaning towards one side, meaning like limbing, or in fact carrying a greater responsibility because he has not fulfilled. You need to be balanced. How would you deal with that emotionally, um, mentally, financially? That would be that would be something you need to uh, exercise. And I, I would advise anyone wanting to get married, uh, any man or e- even a woman who would who would uh, marry a man who is already married to either one or two or three uh, women before her, that they would take a seminar or a tournament or a course, if you will, a short one, of course, to be prepared. This is very important. But all is based on how the man deals with these, with these women. One of the basic and important approaches is that you'd be fair with it. With, them, with both of them. If you buy something for this woman, you need to buy the same thing for this woman. If you give this woman an amount of money, for example, you need to give the same amount of money. That is for her own person. But of course, if this one has, let's say, three children, and this one has only one child, of course, spending on this home is not like spending on the other. However, that is because she has more children than the other one, therefore, you'd give her more to spend on three rather than only on one. However, when we are talking about the person of that wife, if you buy her a ring, for example, you need to buy a ring for the same amount in the same type uh, to the other one. You could give her the choice. Either you'd like to buy gold, for example, or bring you a, a, a golden ring, or give her the same amount of money if she prefers to have the money and to do whatever she wants with it. That's her own right. Even, I know, for example, one one of my best friends, mashallah, he's he's a sheikh, and and he said, even when I buy a miswak, I would buy the same thing for every one of my four wives. And sometimes when when we go abroad and, and, and get together, we basically... Uh, uh, help him buying certain things because he doesn't have the time really to go and shop for four four wives. So, you know, we help him with the sizes and everything to buy certain clothing or certain items that he would like to to do. In other words, it is so important. But when we talk about emotions, of course, you know, you might be uh, having more emotion towards one more than the other or less than the other. That is not in your, in your own hand. However, you don't show it to the other. In fact, the best policy is to not mention anything about the second wife or the first wife when you are with the other one. Meaning, give her all the time she needs when you are with her. If you are with her one night of the week, two nights of the week and so on. You have, when you are there, don't ever mention the other one because normally that sensitivity is there and, and the jealousy is always present when we talk about that. So never talk about that. Some of the men, I think, are not wise. And when they, when they deal with a woman, they say, well, look, you're not as good as, as the other one. She does this and this and this. Your cooking is not as good as the other one. You're behavior, you, you know, the way you, you take care of your children and your, your house and so on, this is all bad. This is all terrible and it should not happen. You should avoid all of that and give that woman everything that you have in terms of time, emotion, finance, and so on. That would be the best policy in that regard. Okay? Um, again, continuing on that question of, of of that lady, all right, should we take a break? I'll take a break, but I'll be back with more of Meet Your Advisor after this. So please, stay tuned. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Oh. 
you like to have yourself purified, your children obedient to you? Do you like your dua to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is obligatory for every Muslim and Muslimah to pay the nasiha immediately. That's why the Messenger وسلم, when he saw something wrong, he did not delay it. He issued that immediately. He turned his face to the Prophet and to the people and said, I swear by Allah that I have never ever seen a better educator or instructor than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you are the fourth person in the middle of the cave with those three people, you think that they will see the rays of the sun again? So the fruit of sincerity is that it had an impact on the people but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has a prompt result or effect on the man who's doing it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us and purify our hearts and our deeds. some point of view, are there specific or certain criteria to choose your spouse or your partner to marry or not to marry? Maybe that's the question. Do we revise the quality of performance of our treatment between the family members as fathers or mothers? As they say usually, it's not what you say, it's how would you say it? Wouldn't you like to be a good storyteller for your kids? Neurobiologically speaking, child abuse and emotional trauma causes scars in the brain of the child and this might be not easily healing. What's the exact job description of a father? Is it clothing, payments, and feeding, or other important things? Well, I think the job description of a father is merely giving him love and care, self-confidence, giving him sense of security, and checking for the points of strength to strengthen them. What about potty training and its planning? Oh yeah, actually, it's a state, it's a condition. Fatherhood is not a body or a person, it's a state. Are you a good or skillful designer for the policy and the long-term plans of your, the life of your kids? Join us every Wednesday for Family Issues. I heard it through a brother that you Oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين back with you again with the same uh, continuation of our program meet your advisor here on Huda TV and obviously as I was mentioning earlier regarding how we deal with one's husband I know the sister who asked me the question regarding to stay away from one's husband or one's wife for a long period of time that would create some difficulties, you know, obviously the, this might um, bring a person closer to committing uh, wrongdoing in this regard because they cannot stay away. Well, one of the uh, obvious ways is to turn away from looking into uh, the opposite gender, of course, with interest. This is, this is very bad, and of course, we are not allowed to look into uh, or to have this haram uh, looking and enjoyment of the of the opposite sex, obviously this is very very important. And I know that based on that, when uh, uh, one of the things that, for example, uh, my sister was asking about is that she said uh, I talked to my husband over the phone, and uh, we uh, we even talk about uh, intimate things. And I know that yes, passing uh, things, but remember. There might be some people listening to you. Um, you don't assume that all the calls would be safe and not being recorded, so you be careful with that. The other thing is, not only that, but she, uh, he asked her to send him some pictures of her in a very intimate way. In fact, he said, maybe give, send me some pictures of you and, and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I feel ashamed to, to say, in an un, 
proper way, improper way, that would not be, uh, that would not be allowed. And of course, taking pictures of you, even if it's for your husband or even for yourself, is not allowed in Islam. Remember, these pictures might fall in, in the wrong hands. These pictures would, would call for you to always, uh, you know, look for, for, for things like this and, and get into uh, watching blue movies and so on and so forth. That is very bad, and it does destroy family life. It, it has its own terrible effects on the family. That's why we need to stay away from that, and it is in that regard that we need, we need to stay away from it. And please, don't in any way uh, uh, send him any of that. This is, as you said in your own email, uh, you said this is uh, something that I feel very bad about. Of course, you have all the right, and you feel ashamed of. I agree, and we should not do it. We should repent, and you should um, erase those and and delete if that is in your in your computer. Delete all these pictures immediately, forever. This is this is very very bad, and and it should not happen. Uh, another. Email that I got, and I think we we talked about we talked about that we talked about um, uh, Um Ismail. Well, this is this is Ali who was asking about a dream, and I know that uh, he said uh, this happened to me and so on. But my I don't I don't recommend anyone to fall into how dreams uh, are being interpreted and you give it to someone. I myself don't have any knowledge of interpreting dreams. Uh, and that, by the way, it has to be given to an expert and someone who has full knowledge. And by the way, this is given to human beings. They don't acquire it, as some people would think. It's not, yes, some of it, part of it is, is of course, to learn, to know how things you know, are being resembled, for example, what are the signs and, and names and indications for a particular thing to be looked? But the way you interpret it is really given as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I had, when I had a program on Iqra TV long time ago, more than 10 years ago, when we had Sheikh Yusuf Al-Mutlaq, for example, who was one of the great interpreters of dreams. And uh, even because of what he did, actually, since... He, he uh, might affect people, people's lives. And I don't recommend these shows where they would interpret dreams right away on, on the air for, for people. I don't recommend that because it could be something bad. And a, a dream interpreter has to be honest and has to tell you exactly what that would mean. That's why sometimes when they see a bad or, 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 or a terrible thing that might uh, happen, Okay, let me uh, stop here because I have Mahmoud from Somalia. Salamu alaikum. Mahmoud, are you there? Muhammad. Yes, brother, how are you? Yes. Are you well? Yes, yes, brother, I'm fine. We Alhamdulillah, are fine. you're calling we are from Makadishu, right? Da, da, da. Makadishu? TV because it's very Islamic. No, no. We lost? We lost him. I know it is difficult. That's why I had to stop there because I know if I don't allow this call to go through and, and don't let a person wait, uh, we always have trouble uh, getting brothers from Somalia, from Nigeria, from you know some African countries because of the uh, logistics of communication. I know it would be difficult, but... Uh, nonetheless, I, I was going to ask about the Muslim situation in Somalia. I know that we need to stand all together and we need to overcome all of the challenges that face us as, a human, uh, as, as human beings first and then as one ummah, one nation all together because you feel so bad that things that take place in a country like Somalia or a country like uh, Libya or country uh, like what is taking place in Afghanistan and Iraq and so on, all of all, all, all is 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 really bad, and that's why we always need to be 
uh, to be alert to what the enemies of Islam plan for us. But on the other time, on the other hand, we need to be very careful not to commit wrongdoing and mistakes against the other. We should not be uh, partying with one side against another. We should not in any way uh, you know, take sides in, in issues among Muslims. Of course, we, we side with, with those who have the right, but we always need to depend on dialogue in solving our problems. We need to get together and talk rather than uh, talk with arms. We need to talk with words, not with arms, and not to resolve our conflicts by violence. That would not lead us anywhere. That's just something that came to my mind (coughs) when I received this call from uh, Somalia. (coughs) But I wish Brother Muhammad would, or Mahmoud would come back to us. So, it, regarding dreams, I would, I would not recommend you to think about dreams much. If you see a good dream, go ahead and, and, uh, and be happy about it, alhamdulillah. If you see something in your sleep uh, that is uh, bad or, or doesn't, it doesn't you know, make you feel good, just... Uh, spit on your left side three times and say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. And inshallah. All right. Ismail from Somalia now. Yes, Ismail. Assalamu alaikum. Ismail. Go ahead now. Brother, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Go ahead. Yes, brother, we are we are very greeting uh, and uh, all the the, the mashaykh of of Al-Huda TV because if we are particular in Somali people, we are very like uh, from this TV because most of our time is we are enjoying mm. to, to to watch this TV because it's very very attractive Islamic TV. Alhamdulillah. What's your name on your mind tonight? My mind is uh, is a. Uh, there is another uh, different thing is, and uh, if we are Muslim our people, uh, and most of our time is we are thinking and uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created our, uh, this, um, this world and uh, the people stay in this world, and they must worship him because um, uh, we see some of the people are, are miss uh, our time, their time, yeah, um, and because... Um, they, they are not, uh, they are not worshipping mm. Allah, and as a voluntary brother. Yes, I, I'm listening. They're not worshipping Allah in what way? Because uh, some of the people, because, yeah, some of the people are worshipping Allah, but they are not going the true line of, of, of Allah. I Allah. see, okay. So, Sometimes they are praying the, 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 the Salah, and another time they are true. Uh, they are not praying because they are, 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 are not good uh, people. Ah, I Some see. Of the people. Okay, okay. All right. I, I, I think I do understand your point, which is very legitimate. Sometimes we don't act like we are good Muslims. And therefore... Maybe we say, what is the benefit of, of your prayer? Let me address that issue, inshallah. I'll, I'll talk about the issue, Mahmoud, or Ismail. I'll talk about that, inshallah. Any other issue on your mind? Ismail? Yes, uh, there is a different issue now in my mind. Yes, and another one. Yes. Yes? Go ahead. Yes, uh, and uh, as the adult of, 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 the, of, the, of the Muslim people is, and I saw some of them, not all of them, and they are not, they are going, the, such as uh, to sit in the cafeteria, and they are missing their time is, uh, for the portion of the TV, and some things that are not good for, for themselves. I see. And so that they must be calculate their time, because uh, time is growing. Or what? Because no, no, no one can uh, miss this time without anything. 
Okay, thank you so much, Ismail. I have your both points, inshallah, I'll address that. Thanks so much. Jazakallahu khairan. All right, very good. Now, when we, uh, well, going into this particular issue of, um, of a Muslim praying and worshipping Allah, yet when that person deals with human beings, with other Muslims or non-Muslims for that matter, y- you, can, you can see that they're not acting upon their own religion. In other words, they have like two separate compartments where for one thing they worship Allah, they do very well in their own prayer and so on, they take care of that, which is something nice. But on the other side, this does, is not reflected in their, in their dealings. That's why we need to have this connection between what we do in our prayer, in our fasting, in our relationship with Allah, and how we deal with other Muslims. You know, the Prophet ﷺ says this very beautiful hadith, المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده. A Muslim is the one who Muslims are being saved from his own tongue and his own hand. Meaning that person does not cross boundaries with other Muslims, does not deal with, does not hurt or injure other Muslims either by hand or by, uh, by, the, by the tongue. That's, that's important in that regard. And that's why we need always to be very careful not to treat people terribly, either because we're not patient or because we don't give people their own rights or we try to get something that is not ours, or we try to get it in a violent way, all of that is bad. And I know that if we need to fight for our own rights, we have the right to do so. But yet, at the same time, we need to be very careful not to do it with transgression, with injustice. That is the case. And, and, and I, I thank you, Ismail, really, for raising this particular issue. The second one, you said some Muslims may watch bad uh, movies or, or uh, programs on television, and they, uh, of course, that is not a good behavior. Yes, obviously. I know that you said you're happy with Huda TV and watching all the uh, uh, sheikhs who are who appear on Huda TV and maybe on some other Islamic uh, TV stations, yet, you know, some people don't, don't do that, don't, don't like that, and they go beyond that and watch something that is bad or terrible. Of course, we need to observe what we do and what we watch, and immediately if we see something bad, in fact, we should not allow this to happen or to take place in our homes with our families. We should not allow... Bad stations, you should, as a Muslim, if you have a television set, go ahead and and program it where you allow only some good, clean stations and don't allow the other terrible ones that are not supposed to be in your house. And ask your family members, starting with yourself, to watch only the good ones. For example, you might watch some news, for example, some analysis, some documentaries, some uh, shows, uh, mashallah, that deal with, with Islamic way, and let the rest of the time to be spent on something good, something that is positive. And of course, this is, this is important. Um, let me get to this uh, again. This is from Anwar, who said, my employer agreed to pay for work done to, uh, uh, for me about one year ago, and he still has uh, not paid me, even though I have asked, and now I have stopped. I have forgiven him, and I put it a pass of me. Uh, do I have any uh, reward in the akhirah? Of course, but this is your right, by the way. And if that person is not doing it, you should do it in the right way, by asking this person who is, for example, an employer, ask him to do this because he's not doing the right thing. If he's able to do it, and he's not giving you your own right, yes, if you forgive him, you'll get a reward, but 
if you give it, if you don't forgive him uh, because you 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 got tired, and of course there there was no way. Of course, you're being now treated unjustly, and therefore it is your own right. And this person is committing a sin. And if you want to help him as a Muslim, if you want to help that person as a Muslim, and to not let him commit this wrongdoing and gain some um, sins by doing what he what he's doing is to remind him that if you do this, you are gaining some sins and, and you'll be uh, treated justly on the Day of Judgment because you took my own right. So my advice for you is to do it. Okay, I need to stop here for a break and we will be back. So please, stay tuned. I heard it through a brother that you Oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty Dear viewers, Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Kids Quiz do you have them? Do you want your kids to enjoy their time? Do you want them to benefit from their time? Would you like to increase their knowledge in Islam and general culture? Honesty, Brother Frisco. Yes! Whoa! How should you choose your friend? And they should have lots and lots of toys! Yes! A show consists of challenges. Questions. Oh, no, no, no. The two teams with the most points at the end of the show, they win the lovely golden medal. Or if you come in second place, of course, you win a lovely silver medal. The winning team overall gets a lovely golden medal. I'm very excited that I did it. I didn't believe that I could do it. Do you like to teach them the Islamic values? Would you like to get to know our puppet Frisco? It's a good day today. Join our program, Kids Quiz, to have more knowledge and fun. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Talking about this very interesting issue sent by uh, Jay who said uh, I uh, last time watched this program okay and I uh, want to call but he said he I didn't have the guts but the issue is that I always go to my family for vacation and I bring my own children but then what my wife starts to quarrel with my family, and they always get in, 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 in bad situation and circumstances, and I, I, get, I get caught in the middle. I have no guts to talk with both sides, um, so some of my brothers are, are even putting some blame on me, so as to why I'm so close to the family of the wife for the last 10 years. I'm suffering from this dilemma, and said, after two months, I'll be going back on vacation if things are not solved i might just uh, think of divorce because of that what advice would you give me well that's that's very interesting i mean if you know by default that you cannot deal with this issue and yet you want to resort to divorce which is even worse after 10 years and of course you do have children as i would assume and then you'd like to end with separation or divorce. This is not the solution. Remember that divorce is the worst type of solution. It is like an escape. And it's the last thing that we need to do if we need to uh, solve a particular situation. I think you need to deal with it wisely. And if you think that uh, you need to see and deal with the situation, for example, if the issue is between you and the family of your wife, 
then you need to stay away from that. Let the family, let your wife go to her family, spend the time w with them, and you stay away. Because sometimes staying away would solve the situation. If the situation is between your wife and her family, because it's not clear to me where the problem is exactly, so I think uh, in that case you need to lessen the uh, period of time that she spends. She might stay for one day, two days, and say, Assalam, how are you? Good, have dinner. Next day, goodbye. I mean, that would be enough. Or just only by calling, staying in touch uh, through communication, that would solve the situation. Because you always, there is always a solution that we need to resort to better than looking into divorce. And I think digging the issue so much, sometimes I know that ignoring the whole situation is not right. But again, digging on the same issue and talking much about it is really complicating the situation rather than solving it. So my advice is always to get the shortest way to solve a situation. Avoidance at times is important. One of the right solutions is to lessen the amount of contact between one, and one side and the other side in order to lessen the conflict. Because if you see a person all the time, if you get in conflict, sometimes that's not solved. And, and the only way is to stay away for some time, seek, um, you know, be nice with them, give them, send them some, some nice gifts when you are uh, meeting with them, so at least to get their attention to be closer to them. I think that would be, that would be a very good and, and very nice way to deal with this situation. All right. I do have this email from uh, Jamila who said, I have an issue of feeling uh, towards Allah. Su'al al what is it? Su'al al uh Towards Allah sometimes and, and uh, also towards fellow human beings. How do I avoid these and overcome these feelings? Maybe some terrible thinking about Allah and his own creation and so on, what you need to do is that obviously is from shaitan. You know, terrible feelings about either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or human beings. Sometimes we feel uh, or think ill of someone. Well, I think that person is doing this because he wants to hurt me or because he's so bad. Why does he smile at me? I think he's making fun of me. Sometimes that feeling comes to the mind of people. That's why we need to avoid that. You need to correct your image and not to wear some black glasses. What you need to do is, is take white glasses or, or clear glasses where you see things as they are. All, all right. Raksana, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, sister? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you uh, about Umrah. Yes. We are a family. We are going for the first time for Umrah. MashaAllah. So where can I get information of step by step how to perform Umrah? Okay. How many because are... I don't want to commit any mistakes for right, the first time. Right, right. You haven't made Hajj yet? No, I haven't done Hajj. Okay. My son wants to take me to Umrah first. InshaAllah. Inshallah. We will try and go for Hajj next year. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, what uh, uh, city are you in in the UAE? I am staying in Dubai. I am from okay. India. Okay, okay, very good. My husband, uh, myself, my son, his wife and my daughter, we are all going. Inshallah, inshallah. Very well. I'll, I'll uh, give you the answer, inshallah. Okay, any other question, Roxana? Yeah, that's all, because I don't know. If I search on the internet, I don't know if it's the correct information. Okay, very good. So, yeah, so I want the correct information, how to perform it step by step. Okay, I'll do that for you. Thank you. Okay, Hiba, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. I kind of wanted to ask a question about, uh, I'm kind of engaged to this uh, man and um, we had to get married after one year or more mm -hmm. so we kind of want to know if uh, it's permissible to talk 
before marriage. Okay. You'll so, be uh, you'll be married. In other words, you'll you'll have the contract made after one year. Uh, yeah. Why do we you just need engaged? And yeah. uh, no nikah, nothing is done. So. Right. But why do you need to delay the contract? Um, it's kind of family issues. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, I'll talk um, about I'll talk about that. Any other thing you, is on your mind, Hiba? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. All right, very good. Now let me talk about the Ruks Ruxana's question regarding Umrah. Obviously, Umrah is a must if you are able to do it. And, and alhamdulillah that Allah has guided you to take the decision to go and do Umrah. Now, the point is, as you said, you need to learn how to do it step by step fully in order not to commit a mistake. And you need, first thing is to have pure intention. And also, you need to learn how to do it uh, from A to Z. One of the uh, ways is, of course, to do it by self-learning through the internet, for example, or books that are available from the Department of Islamic Affairs in Dubai. That is, that is important if you can do it. But I think um, uh, Hajj, uh, there's a very nice book, I think it's available in Dubai or maybe on the, on, on the internet, called Hajj from A to Z, which includes Umrah by Dr. Mamdouh. Um, Muhammad, I think one of the best books that I've seen because it gives you also pictures about what to do and how you do things in that. Um, also, uh, uh, Hajj, to Hajj and Umrah, the number two, Hajj, H-A-J-J, and Umrah, U-M-R-A-H, I think, dot com. Uh, that is also a good website where you, they will give you a detailed explanation according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam in this regard. The final, the final question I need before I, um, I leave for, for tonight is Hiba regarding this marriage that will take place. Is she allowed to talk to the, to the husband? Well, uh, husband to be. He's not a husband yet. My advice is that you should not prolong the period. You should make it as short as possible. And yes, you may talk about certain things again with the presence of some of your family members because you should not allow, you should not talk about anything, only about what you want from me, what should I look for, for, for in your personality, um, where do we live, uh, things of the of this sort. And if we uh, like each other in that regard, maybe few times, I think that would be enough to understand and to know the personality of each other. Otherwise, this could prolong and, and uh, you might need to go out together, which is not allowed for you to do so. So if you have any more questions, please write to me at meetyouradvisor at huda.tv. Please, inshallah, until we meet with you next Friday at 9 p.m. Mecca time, I leave you with Allah's care and protection. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. I know sometimes you feel all alone. Call me anytime when you feel all the way down. Oh, 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 trials and temptations lie at every corner we turn. It's a test from Allah to see if we succeed or not. My brother, it's a trial that you're going through. So don't be afraid. Allah's there for you. So hold on, Allah's there for you, hold on, He's listening to you.